Hey there dudes and dudettes, Arlo here, and today we're reviewing... Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. This review is coming from the perspective of a guy who hasn't owned a Mario Kart game since Mario Kart DS, so instead of focusing on how Deluxe improves upon the Wii U version, it's mostly just gonna be a review about a game that I just played for the first time. So, will this game rev up my engine, or crush my spirit with the cold, unfeeling cruelty of a blue shell? Let's find out. <laughs> Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is a game that needs no introduction. Now, you know what Mario Kart is, you race around and throw stuff at guys and get hit at the last second and swear a bunch and it's a great time. But as someone who's been out of the Mario Kart scene for 12 years, it was really interesting to see just how the series has evolved. And also how it's, well, not evolved. Uh, it's new and improved, yet still the same goofy kart action I grew up with. First off, them visuals. This game wowed me from the opening moments of my first race. The lighting is beautiful, the colors are vibrant, everything is just so shiny and crisp and just darn pretty. The courses are packed with so many little details, and environmental effects like water and dust bring a wonderful realism to the cartoony world. Then the resolution ups the look of the game even more. 1080p in docked mode means anything and everything looks smooth and beautiful, and that's even more impressive considering the game runs so darn well. The frame rate is also smooth, dare I say, silky smooth. It's incredible just how flawlessly this game runs when it's pushing visuals this nice, and it makes for a constantly enjoyable experience when playing in single player. Since it contains all the original game's DLC, Deluxe has a preposterous number of courses to choose from. It's always fun to see the classic levels from way back, and while they've been given little anti-grav bits here and there to modernize them, the Mario Kart 8 exclusive tracks that make heavy use of the mechanic are really where it's at. Visually, they're just spectacular. Some of them are these massive, crazy, vertical monstrosities that loom over you, and they never fail to give me a little rush of excitement whenever I start one. Then the design is just phenomenal. So much happens on these courses that they're like little amusement park rides. One of my very favorite ones is Cloud Top Cruise, where you race across clouds and a beanstalk, then spend a few moments passing over the deck of an airship, then plunge into a rainy storm cloud where lightning electrifies some of the boosts so you have to avoid them. All this crazy stuff keeps you on your toes and brings a huge amount of excitement to a race. Trying out each course for the first time was particularly thrilling. The anti-gravity thing makes courses more interesting, but uh, I, I found it really funny just how hard it was for me to notice at first. Watching footage of the game, it looked like driving on the ceiling was gonna be all super crazy, but when I got into the driver's seat, I found that the change was subtle enough that I didn't always notice. The ground would slope up, then slope up some more, and then up some more, and I'd be like, wow, this is a big hill. Oh no wait, I'm completely upside down. I was playing with my friend when we first got our copies, and at first I had to remind him that anti-grav was even a thing. The more I played and the more courses I tried out, the more it became obvious to me, of course, and I've come to really love it, and I certainly don't want to see another Mario Kart without it. It's too much fun zipping around twirly bobs and choosing whether to take the inside course or hop up on the wall and just flying around everywhere. It adds a dynamic to the game that really gets the adrenaline pumping, more so than with any other Mario Kart. While the courses offer a huge amount of variety, I can't exactly say the same for the characters. This game has a ton of characters, but I have to say I was pretty disappointed when I saw the roster. The added non-Mario characters? Fantastic. Love them. Playing as Link? Yes, please. But everyone else? Well, it's just kind of sad to see how very little's changed, as it's filled with throwaway characters. Mario, Luigi, Peach, Bowser, Toad, DK, Yoshi, of course you gotta have your main dudes, but baby Rosalina? Catsuit Mario? Pink Gold Peach? What? Come on, why? Then every time I see the Koopalings in a Mario game, I groan audibly, because that means seven character slots that I will never care about. If you remove the Koopalings and alternate versions of characters, that's nearly a third of the characters gone. Mario has such a rich history of characters and species that it's consistently disappointing to see how Nintendo doesn't give two hoots about that history and would rather fall back on the same guys forever. But hey, like I said, the non-Mario drivers really do make a big difference and I'm happy for them at least. Though I have to say, why Isabelle? <laughs> I feel like there are a million better Animal Crossing characters they could have used. Anyway, whatever, let's move on. Content-wise, Mario Kart 8 is a little on the light side. Now, I understand that the main draw is always going to be multiplayer, though I do wish there was more to do single player. You're really just racing again and again for trophies and fast times without any real variety. You don't even have stuff to unlock except for kart parts, so I don't even get that one small feeling of progression as I race. Like I said, the last Mario game I owned was DS, and that game spoiled me with its missions mode. Here was something one player could really dig into and spend some time on. Beat all the Goombas, destroy all the item boxes, get all the coins while driving backwards. I mean, it had boss battles for Pete's sake. 
But again, I'm a little sad to dip into the newest Mario Kart and see that for the most part, it's just the same old racing as before with not much else for one lonely player to do. It helps that battle mode can be played single player using bots, though unlike racing, which is always fun, it's not quite the same without a couch full of friends. Speaking of battle mode, there's something I was sad to hear was basically ditched in the Wii U version, but overjoyed to hear was making its return in Deluxe. Uh, I do enjoy duking it out with my friends and with people online, though I'm bummed about how Nintendo did it this time around. Pull up a chair and let me tell you a quick story about a young Arlo. Late 90s, middle school, sleepovers, Mario Kart 64, battle mode. Elimination is the name of the game. My three friends and I enter a course with three balloons each and the last one holding a balloon wins. And this, my friends, is some of the most intense, high adrenaline video game action of my young life. Matches can last ages with four players on these big maps, and that makes it all the more exciting. We hunt each other like prey, we play deadly games of chicken, and to be the last man standing at the end of it all is to know true glory. Naturally, when I learned that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe would be bringing back the good old battle mode we all know and love, I was overjoyed. Racing has always been fun, but for me, no karting experience has ever touched battle mode from 64. But when I dug into it and checked out what it had to offer, I was crushed. Now, there are five different modes this time around, and you can play them all online, which is pretty cool. Renegade Roundup is a good idea, but seems pretty unbalanced, as the Renegades win 90% of the time in my experience. Coin Runners is okay, nice to have the option, I guess. I was a little surprised by how much fun we had with Shine Thief. Bob on Blast is really hectic and the sort of thing I would have loved as a kid. Then you've got your classic balloon battle. Here's the crushing part, though. There's no stock or elimination option. You get points for hitting guys, and you lose half your points if you lose all your balloons, and that's how it works. So instead of engaging in intense battles to the death, you just run around shooting guys for a few minutes, and when the clock runs out, the game tells you who won. And this right here turns what would have been something I spent endless hours on into a mildly fun diversion that I get tired of after a few rounds. Now, for online play, I entirely understand using the point system. Elimination style means that all you have to do is avoid everybody and hope they take each other out, and of course timing it means shorter matches and thus more matches that can be played. Smash Brothers, same thing. It's the most fair way to play. But when it's just me and some friends on a couch, we use the honor system. We know that none of us are gonna be a sneaky little weasel, so we always, always, no matter who I'm playing with or where, set each match to stock. For local multiplayer, it's just more fun, and I've never met anyone in my whole Smash playing life who thought otherwise. Not including this extremely simple option in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is baffling. Like I said, it basically kills the fun for me. It's such a small thing, but it makes all the difference. There are other options I wish they'd included as well. It's just silly that you can't choose the number of bots for each match. Eight additional CPUs is way too many, and at times my friends and I feel like we never even see each other amid the chaos. But then zero is often too few, and we're looking for each other in these big empty courses, which again, would be fine if there was an elimination option, but there isn't, so it's just lame. Why is there no option to have just a handful of CPUs? It's another very small, very simple thing that would make things way better. Unfortunately, lack of options doesn't just affect battle mode. Racing seems to have a lot of options on the surface, but it rarely had the ones we were looking for. To bring up Smash Brothers again, you know how you can choose what items you want to use and it's super easy to do? Well, there's none of that here. The best you get are these unhelpfully cryptic item sets. Then again, of course, you can't input a specific number of NPCs. The worst though, is the game's absolute insistence that you play at least four races at a time. The other night I played with my friends at a party and naturally we were constantly switching out people and wanting to change characters between races. Thing is, the game always wanted to push us to the next race. In order to change up, we always had to quit and back all the way out to the character selection screen every time. There's no option to just be brought back to character select once a race is over. It sounds pretty inconsequential, I know, but it wasted a ton of time and it was easy to forget and accidentally hit next race before people got a chance to switch out. While we're talking about local multiplayer, let's get into connection. The game supports up to four player split screen and while this lowers the frame rate considerably, it's never something that bothers anyone and it remains consistent without any drops. Wireless play is quick and easy to set up, but there's one problem. While one switch can handle four player split screen, bring other switches into the mix and each one can only handle two. So like I said, I'm at this party the other night, my friends got his switch and his TV, I bring my switch and my TV, we got lots of controllers and we're ready to link up and get everyone playing together but then we learn about the two person limit, so suddenly linking them is pointless. With two linked switches, we have a max of four people playing, so we're better off just keeping the system separate and having four per TV. 
Yes, linking is easy and a great feature, but in order to get a big game going, you've got to have a ridiculous number of switches and TVs. Between all this and the lack of options, we were constantly pushed into situations where we just had to deal and move on. The specific ways we wanted to play never seemed to be available, and we were always asking, why can't we do this? Why didn't they include that? Why do we have to do it this way? Of course, though, as much as we complained, that complaining always stopped when a race started. All these issues would be much bigger if that core gameplay wasn't still so darn satisfying, even after all these years. And I find it amazing just how much it feels like it did when I was a kid staying up way too late and pigging out on pizza. My gosh, as an aside, if you're still at that place in your life, you enjoy it, man. You keep playing Mario Kart and you enjoy the heck out of it. One more note about local multiplayer, the Switch offers the very cool option of sharing the joy and playing with two people using nothing more than the system itself and its two Joy-Cons. The screen is a little small to comfortably split into two parts for a super long time, and a sideways Joy-Con is impossible to use unless I've got a strap handy, but having the ability to hand someone a controller and play together at any time is really something special. So online multiplayer, this is obviously a massive perk compared to Mario Karts of old because it means you've always got other humans to play with. Feature-wise, it's pretty straightforward and offers basically everything I could want. You can hop into random matches with people from around the world, or only in your region, or only from your friends list. You can also make and join tournaments, which is particularly fun. Some tourneys are team-based and run all the time, so it's fun to just hop in and earn a few points for your team of choice real quick. The real problem here is connection issues. There are times when everything goes smoothly for an entire play session, and there are other times when I can't seem to connect to anyone, or I get dropped from multiple races in a row. And the weirdest part is how whenever I do get dropped, it's never preceded by any lag or connection hiccups. Everything is going just swimmingly until BOOM! I'm out. No explanation. It doesn't break the game by any means, but I really do think it should be a little more reliable, especially since it's a big selling point. Hopefully by the time Nintendo starts charging for this stuff, some of the kinks will be worked out. Lastly, I want to talk about the in-game mechanics. Obviously not a ton has changed, but I took a few notes during my time with the game. Most notably, the ability to hold two items is back, which is something I've been gunning for for ages. I mean, I was never that excited about Mario Kart 8 before. Uh, it looked cool, but you know, just at the time, I didn't really have a lot of free time and uh, nothing about it grabbed me. But when I heard that they were bringing back battle mode and double item boxes and deluxe, I was all over it. Yet, I'm sad to say, just like with the battle mode, Nintendo kind of dropped the ball. Sure, you can hold two items at once, like in Double Dash, but unlike in Double Dash, you can't switch between them. I'm of the opinion that switching was the entire point of having two items. It added a new element of strategy to items and just overall made the game more fun. From my admittedly casual perspective, the mechanic made Double Dash the best of the series. It was just a strictly better way to do items. But now, there's none of that. You've just got more items, and if you want to use the thing in the second slot, you gotta waste the thing in the first slot. Again, not a deal breaker, yada yada yada, but yet another huge disappointment. Yet another thing that was like, oh, not this too, give me this one thing! Moving on though, I had heard that coins made a comeback in the 3DS version, and I was happy to see them here. Collecting coins is just another thing to do and another way to get ahead, which makes things more interesting. Earning boosts by tricking off of jumps also adds a whole new dynamic that I just love. Again, it's more to do while you race, which means a more engaging experience. I was certainly happy to see how many turbos are given over time during a drift, as snaking was the reason I played Mario Kart DS online exactly twice before quitting forever. It was a fun surprise to see just how insanely, blazingly fast 200cc is, and I'm enjoying carving my way through each cup. I noticed that fake item boxes are gone this time around, and that's confusing. I think they're a lot of fun, and they seem to really be a Mario Kart staple in my mind. Being able to replay your races and save them and slow them down and everything, that's a really fun feature. It's always nice to really examine the pain in your opponent's face when you smack them with a red shell. Superhorn makes things really interesting. I mean, the ability to thwart a blue shell that's got you in its sights? That's crazy! The inevitability of blue shells has always been something of a weakness in the series, so this really helps balance things out. The problem is that by giving the person in first place more power, at least in part, they seem to have spawned another problem. See, the folks who aren't doing so well in the race get all the crazy items, so that means it's a war zone back there at all times, and they tend to hit each other instead of the people in front. Then the people in third or fourth are getting hit a lot, but they don't even have good items to fight back or get ahead with. As such, you've usually got two people fighting for first place the entire time, and it's hard to bring them down. Say I'm in third place and I'm looking for something to shoot at them. Basically, all I can count on to make a difference is a red shell, and the likelihood of getting one is pretty low. 
Most of the time I'm getting bananas and green shells and coins. The guys in front of me are getting the same things, but to them, most of these can be used for protection. Especially when you consider that now they can hold two items, they're getting way more defensive items than I'm getting offensive ones. Even blue shells aren't likely to slow them down much, and not at all if they've got super horns. Ah, but if one of them does happen to hit a string of bad luck and fall back into the fray, then there's a great chance they'll never get out of the crossfire and back up to the front. Lose the spot, and it's lost. Way too many of my races are this way, with one or two players blasting through the course unchecked and everyone else scrambling for table scraps. On the one hand, it's nice to be less afraid that your placement will be ripped from you at any moment without anything in the world for you to do about it, but it also makes for some boring races sometimes, so uh, there are pros and cons, I guess. If I have one more complaint, it's that there are way too many ways to lose your items during a race. I mean, if you get something good, waiting for the best strategic time to use it is largely a bad idea. Keep it any longer than four stinking seconds and a boo's gonna steal it, or you're gonna get zapped, or it's just gonna fall out of you when you get hit. It adds a chaotic element to races, sure, but I feel like it's taken just a smidge too far. Frustrated shouts are all a part of playing with friends, but everyone losing their items all the time caused what felt like actual frustration, like the feels unfair, not fun kind. It's hard enough to use some of these items well, so the constant risk of instantly losing them really kind of stinks. As you can see, I have multiple gripes with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, some smaller, some larger, but at its core is that same stupidly fun card action that we've come to expect from Nintendo, and really, it is what matters most. I'm very disappointed with its two fixed item slots and lack of multiplayer options, but there's no denying that the game is still technically impressive, visually stunning, packed to the brim with a huge variety of courses, and overall, just a blast to play. If you buy this game, you will be playing the newest, greatest Mario Kart, and to this day, Mario Kart is still one of the best ways to spend an evening with a handful of your friends. It leaves you boasting and shouting and ranting at each other like very few games can, and that's something special in my book. They just need to fix up the online multiplayer a bit more and let my friends and I play the game how we want to play it before the overall package is complete. I give Mario Kart 8 Deluxe a 5 out of 7. Cue perfect score jokes. Ugh. Before I go, one quick thing. I recently tweeted my Switch friend code and didn't realize that it would take so long to accept requests and that there's a 300 friend cap. So if your request didn't get accepted, I still love you. And if at some point you're deleted from my friends, it's so someone else can have a turn because 300 is not a lot. Anyway, you guys keep blasting each other with shells and bananas and I will catch you later. This video was brought to you in part by my top patrons and charter members of the official Night Court fan club, those guys up there. If you like what I do and want to support my YouTube shenanigans, head on over to my Patreon page where you can get behind the scenes updates on what I'm working on for as little as $1 a month. See ya!